Right-wing politics in Europe has been on the rise in recent years, with various right-wing parties and movements gaining popularity and electoral success. Der Islam gehört nicht zu Deutschland. From Viktor Orban, who's been in power for 12 years. <laughs> to Andre Duda, who's been in power for seven years. <laughs> and now Georgia Maloney, creating Italy's most far-right government since the fascist era of Mussolini. Let's examine the trends and developments that have shaped right-wing politics in the EU in recent years, and consider their potential impact on the future of the European Union. 200 Millionen Afrikaner bei allem Respekt, aber weder Europa, dann noch Europa. First, let's consider the main right-wing political parties in the EU. The most well-known of these is likely the National Front in France, which has a long history of anti-immigration and nationalist rhetoric. In Germany, the Alternative for Germany party has gained significant support in recent years, particularly among young people. Other notable right-wing parties in the EU include the Freedom Party in Austria, the Party for Freedom in the Netherlands, Fidesz in Hungary, Law and Justice Party in Poland, and the Sweden Democrats. Right-wing parties in the EU often advocate for stricter immigration policies, often citing concerns about national security and cultural preservation. They also often support the idea of national sovereignty and are critical of EU-level decision-making and integration. In addition, many right-wing parties in the EU promote traditional values and oppose the legalization of things like same-sex marriage and abortion. There have also been some notable trends and developments in right-wing politics in the EU in recent years. One of the most significant is the increasing influence of far-right parties on the political landscape. This has led to concerns about the potential impact on EU-level decision-making and the possible erosion of democratic values. Another trend worth noting is the rise of anti-EU sentiment among right-wing parties. Oh, no, I'm a fighter for the rights. You know, I'm a freedom fighter in the communist regime. While these parties have always been critical of the EU and its institutions, the Brexit vote in the United Kingdom has emboldened some right-wing parties to call for their own countries to leave the EU. But the dangers of right-wing politics go beyond just controversial policy positions. Right-wing ideologies often breed xenophobia and racism and can lead to discrimination against minority groups. Five European countries in particular, but not exclusively, deserve attention on this front. Going from the most to the least acute level of threat, the world should keep an eye on Hungary, Poland, Italy, Sweden, and France. In all these countries, far-right parties are electorally successful and politically powerful, though their ability to weaken liberal democracy varies. Hungary Fidesz leader Viktor Orban was initially among the most unlikely East European politicians to become a threat to liberal democracy. Although Hungary is no longer a liberal democracy, in September 2022, the European Parliament declared the country an electoral autocracy and elections are free but unfair, Orban and Fidesz are popular. In particular, his anti-immigration and pro-family policies have broad support, as do government investments in rural areas. However, he is also helped by a hopelessly divided opposition and complete control of the media. Poland The story of Poland is similar to that of Hungary, but less pronounced so far. The current ruling party, Law and Justice, has its roots in anti-communist opposition and moved from the center to the far right over two decades. The party also faces much stronger opposition from both civil society and political parties in Poland, at least compared to Fidesz in Hungary. This became particularly visible in 2020, when the government further tightened its abortion ban, and over 100,000 Polish women flooded the streets of Warsaw in protest. Polish liberal democracy has been weakened by seven years of law and justice rule, but recent events suggest it is still alive and kicking back. Italy Italy has had consistent far-right parliamentary representation in the post-war era, 
but it was Silvio Berlusconi who moved the far right out of the margins, creating a center-right bloc with the post-fascists of the National Alliance and the regional populists of the Northern League in 1994. Maloney is both the first female prime minister of Italy and the first far-right prime minister of a Western European country in the post-war era. But her power base is much weaker than her allies in Hungary and Poland. So, while the Italian far-right is in power and worth keeping an eye on, it is doubtful it can do similar damage to the institutions and values of liberal democracy as its ideological brethren to the East. Sweden in October last year, a right-wing minority government was formed, which depends formally on the parliamentary support of the Sweden Democrats, whose influence can be seen in the lengthy coalition agreement. However, all power still rests in the hands of formerly liberal democratic politicians, even if these politicians have radicalized sharply to the right in recent years. Consequently, the far-right threat comes primarily from traditional right-wing parties for the moment. Still, it is doubtful that Sweden's right-wing parties, both traditional and radical, will go much beyond more authoritarian and nativist politics as all seem invested and supportive of the political system. France the National Front is the prototype of the modern populist radical right party. For decades, the party and its charismatic leader Jean-Marie Le Pen dominated the European far right. Marine Le Pen, who replaced her father in 2011 and renamed the party as National Rally in 2018. Although remaining loyal to the party's ideological core, she launched a successful de-demonization campaign, which helped to further mainstream and normalize her ideas and party. Even President Emmanuel Macron, elected after an anti-Le Pen campaign in 2017, has since adopted important parts of her propaganda, including in his campaign against Islamo-leftism. Other dominoes may soon fall too. Spain and Finland are set to head to the polls in this year, and both elections could result in right-wing coalitions that would include far-right parties. Meanwhile, Belgium's top two parties in current polling averages are far-right populists. Oh, what is Islam out? Out! EU leadership is either ignoring these facts, or it's willfully misunderstanding them. So what does the future hold for right-wing politics in the EU? It's difficult to say for certain, but it's clear that these parties will continue to play a significant role in the political landscape of the EU. In conclusion, right-wing politics in the European Union present a real danger to our society. It is up to each and every one of us to take action to prevent the spread of these harmful ideologies.